Have you ever tried to hire architectural staff and found your job ad just isn't getting much attention or that you're struggling to attract the best candidates? So what if you knew how to write a killer job ad to attract great candidates to your practice? That's exactly what we're going to help you with in this episode of Architecture Business Club, the weekly podcast for solo and small firm architecture practice owners just like you who want to build a profitable, future-proof architecture business that fits around their life. I'm the host, John Clayton, and if you want a business in architecture that gives you more freedom, flexibility and fulfilment, then go to architecturebusinessclub.com forward slash blueprint and download the Architecture Business Blueprint. It's the step-by-step formula to freedom for architects, architectural technologists and architectural designers, and it's absolutely free as a gift from me. Now let's discuss writing a great job ad. Eileen Round is the founder and owner of Arch Jobs, a dedicated online platform for advertising and applying to architectural roles across the UK. With extensive experience in the architectural sector, she has developed a profound understanding of the unique challenges faced by job seekers and businesses in this industry. She also offers personalized career coaching sessions to assist job seekers with the CVs and portfolios and provide guidance on structuring an effective job search strategy. You can learn more at archjobs.co.uk. Eileen, welcome to Architecture Business Club. Thank you so much for having me. It's really great. Oh, it's great to have you here. We're going to talk about something really interesting and valuable, I think, for architecture practice owners out there today. But, mm. but first, I know, I know you're a big foodie. So am I, actually. I'm like, I love, I love my food. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so can you, can you tell me about one of your favorite places to eat? Yeah, so I've just moved from Edinburgh to Dubai. So I can't say much about the Dubai scene just yet, but I'm exploring it. Um, but if anyone is in Edinburgh, I would highly suggest a Turkish restaurant called Shish. It's delicious and, yeah, just reminds me of my childhood, to be honest. Oh, that sounds awesome. I'm going to make a note of that for next time that I'm in Edinburgh. You have to do that, yeah. Definitely, yeah. We are going to talk about how to write a great job ad so that architecture practice owners can learn the best practices and find great candidates. So I think to begin, I'd just like to ask, what is the difference between a job ad versus a job description? So I think at first people will think like, is there even a difference? But 100%. So job advert is there to sell an opportunity where you're telling the job seeker, the candidates, like, this is what we're looking for. This is who we are. And then you're telling them the benefits and why they should join instead of your competitors. Whereas a job description is way more detailed. You go into more details such as the job requirements, what their responsibilities will be. So it's a bit more of an HR document in my eyes, a bit drier and not really like selling and making it sound a bit more, you should come and join us. Got it. That that makes sense to me. It, would it typically that you, you'd recommend perhaps writing that job description first before you think about the job ad? Is that something that sometimes people skip over? I mean, most people only have a job description anyway, so I don't really think that's actually an issue. So whatever you have as a job description, don't just upload that as a job advert because it's too dry, it's too boring, it will not sell. So just take that one and then just take whatever, like the most, like just the requirements, the um, the the benefits, take the best stuff out and just turn it into a nice, um, yeah, just a good job advert, which actually sells, sells you as a praxis and the team. Brilliant. That's uh interesting point you've made there about selling yourself as a practice and team to work with so that's a very interesting distinction that probably not everybody thinks about when they're writing a job ad why why is it important to invest time in writing that ad i think if you think about it there are if they, if there's a job um, seeker, they'll be looking through so many job adverts or even job descriptions, and they'll just get really bored of them. So first impressions count. You don't want to overbear them. You don't want to make it too niche where someone reads through the um, requirements and think, there's no way I can meet all of that, all of those requirements. They're clearly looking for a unicorn. Off to the next one, <laughs> you know, which means you'll probably not even get that many um, applications through which if you're a small praxis, you might not have the, the money to pay a recruiter. 
So if you think about it, the better the job advert, the higher the chance is that someone will actually apply um, to the job advert and then you can take it from there, hopefully. Brilliant. That's that's a great way of putting it, it's particularly for those small practices, as you say, that you know, for a very small business or if it's somebody's first hire, um, it can be expensive potentially to go for a recruitment agency. So if we can spend a little bit more time and effort on crafting a really great job ad and then perhaps yeah. avoid having to go to a recruitment agency, then that's going to be potentially a huge saving for that practice. So yeah, really, really good advice. Where can practices advertise their ad? What options are out there to to advertise um, this architectural vacancy? So I think these days it's actually quite easy and I think there are quite a few different options. So you could use your own website and I would hope that everyone's got a good website because people want to go through and see your projects and read about your team and what you're working on. Another way would be to use your social media. So if you have LinkedIn, if you have a Twitter, Twitter probably less, I would say upload that, just say that you're hiring and then provide them with a link. You could also use job boards. This is basically like an online platform where you can advertise your position and job seekers can go and apply um, through that one. I would al- always suggest just if you do advertise architectural position, focus on the architectural job boards because we already have the right target audience. Whereas if you go for the more generic ones, it's it's a bit of a hit and miss. So I would probably just say stick with the more architectural focused ones. And then you could also, depending on how big the team is, you can also uh, incentivize your team and say, do you know anyone? Can you just reach out to your network? And also just use your own network. I think networking is so important, especially if you're as a business owner, because you, you need a good network around you to to thrive. And um, yeah, people will recommend you. So you should not underestimate that part. That's all great advice. That was an interesting point you made there about incentivizing your team as well. So, I mean, how how could you do that to incentivize them? I mean, could you could you like give them a bonus or something? Or yeah, so normally what what practices do is if if let's say I say John, we're looking for an architect. Do you know anyone? And he's like, Oh, I mean, actually, I know someone. You send the CV across, you know, after obviously having a conversation with that candidate, and if that all works out. It might be in the contract that I say, if you manage to bring someone on board, you get a thousand pounds, for example, or 500 pounds after that person passed the probationary period. So usually after three months. Um, and that way, it's a really nice natural way, but it's also, it can be a little bit tricky because sometimes people just recruit their mates. <laughs> so it could just turn a bit weird, <laughs> weird offers. Um, so yeah, just always just think of different ways. If you're looking for um, a graduate, um, I would suggest contact the universities as well, try and engage with them. And um, usually you do manage to get really good where you find some really talented graduates as well. So it really depends who you're looking for. Okay. Okay. That's uh, some more good ideas there. So regarding the, the, the places where we can adver- advertise, are there any particular sites or job boards that that you know of already that we could mention to the listeners i'm i'm sure you know I'm sure there's one that you can mention but i'm i'm wondering if there might be a few out there that might be worth sharing and and also to your knowledge um i presume most of those job boards uh, are paid i would imagine there's still a fee associated with advertising is that correct for all of those architecture job boards yeah i mean um most architectural job boards will charge you to um, to have the, your job listed, um, which is, it depends, like some people or some job boards say first time £99, you know, it will be live for like 28 days. Others will sell them for £200. So it really depends. And I think it's really important to just choose the one, even just trial, you know, just test some, you know, don't be too scared. You just Maybe something works a bit better than the other one. Um, yes, there are there are various um, job boards out there. You've obviously got something like Designs. You've got um, the Reba job boards as well. Um, Seat, um, they have their own job board. So you could use Arc Jobs, my website. We also help to write the job adverts if you need any help. Um, because I do know it can be really daunting to write a job advert. And 
because there's so much to do in a day. And then the last thing, and that's, I think that's the reason why people rush, rush um, um, writing the job advert. And then you're just like, okay, it's out now. Let's hope we get some applications through. And then a few weeks later, it's like nothing. It's like crickets. And he's like, oh, it's not working. Okay. It's like, blah, 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 you know. And uh, I just think like, okay, I'm sure your job advert wasn't that good <laughs> that it managed to reach the right target audience. But um, having said that, um, when I earlier when I mentioned you could also advertise on your social media or on your own website, obviously that requires that you're fairly active on the social media site and not just have a dead account basically and just post one, one you basically do one post and then think, okay, I've done my job, let's wait and see. Like the algorithm will literally go through that, you know, and people might not even see it. So again, if you do social media do like do several posts, not just like one and then think you've done your job. So you've got to be on that one. And if you've got a website where maybe you don't get that many monthly visitors on, the chance that there will be a job seeker is very slim. So you need to do various things to attract the right people. So definitely do your website, do social media, try job boards as well. As I said, you have to trial um, and then use your network. And if you're genuinely struggling, then you could reach out to a, a recruiter as well who focuses across architecture. Again, you have to be aware that it's not the cheapest option, but it could make all the difference. Like, do you want to lose the project or, you know, or, or do you need to find the right person for the job? So you really have to think about all the pros and cons though. That's for sure. I think perhaps one of the things for practice owners to bear in mind is, um, I guess it's that balance of time versus money that if you've you've got a little bit more time and, and not so much funds to recruit this member of staff, then there's a lot that you can do without having to spend an awful lot of money. And as you mentioned earlier, that those architecture specific job boards, that they have got the right audience. It's not just like a generic job board for, for all sorts of different jobs. It's specific to our industry. But the other side being that if you just need to find the right candidate and you need to find them quickly and you don't have time to do all of that, then that's perhaps when, you know, seeking out a recruitment agency might be the better option in that case, I guess. What details do job seekers want? What do they want to know before they actually hit the apply button for that job? That's a really good question. So I think it's fairly clear that people want to know what's the job title, What's the praxis? Obviously, if it's recruitment, then you won't know because they want you to contact them. But um, tell them a little bit about your company, who you are, your location. Like you have to tell us where you are. Because, <laughs> for example, I can't drive. So I would have to check, can I take public transport? How long will it take me before I even apply to a position where I know it will take me two hours to get to your office? Like it's clearly a no-go for me. Then um, the responsibilities, that's what they want to know. Like, what would they be doing? What sort of projects would they be working on? What are the requirements? Obviously, sometimes you need to have conservation experience or you need to have experience on working on large-scale residential schemes. You need to have certain software abilities. Another thing they want to know, and that is something, it's like my pet hate when, they, when um, companies talk about salaries and all they say is competitive. Do you know what? I think... This most likely not competitive. So I would highly recommend stop using competitive salaries because it's not competitive, most likely. And then um, they want to know about the benefits. So do you work, uh, offer hybrid working, um, flexible working? That's really important. And that is one, th one way to actually stand out these days. Like a lot of practices actually kind of go backwards again, which is just mind blowing to me. So you would be lucky to find a practice which offers three days working from home because a lot went went back to like either working from home um, and not working from home at all or only like two days a week. And they want to know about the holidays because they will have families, you know, they want to know, can we go take like a two-week holiday? Can we go do this? Can we do that? And, um, and then they want to know about in order... Like, what do you want them to apply with? Do you want a CV? Do you want a sample portfolio? Do you want a cover letter? And then just an e really easy way, like, okay, this is, if you want to apply, send your information to this email address to Emily, for example, and submit your documents. 
or just click here and this will take you to our um, application system. So um, the internal recruitment system, which is usually a bit long-winded, but it's just people just want to know what they're applying to. And I think a lot of people will not apply to a position if they don't know the salary. People are very picky these days and they will not go through the entire process without knowing what's even the starting salary because a lot of Let's say there's an architect is currently on like £36,000. If it says competitive salary, again, means nothing to anyone. And then all of a sudden you go through the entire interview process and they're like, oh, we would really like you. We offer you 35000 And you're like, are you kidding me? I went through two, three stages. to So you offer me less than I'm on right now. It's a hard no. So you're not only wasting your own time, but you're also wasting the candidate's time and the candidate will not be happy about that. They will probably talk to their colleagues, to their network, and it could have a really bad impact on like just ruining your reputation a little bit. So I'll be very, very careful with that. And before you say like competitive salary, do your research on what the current rates are anyway. Remember, don't forget to download the Architecture Business Blueprint the step-by-step formula to freedom for architects, architectural technologists, and architectural designers. You can grab the blueprint without any charge at architecturebusinessclub.com forward slash blueprint. And if you're enjoying this episode, then please leave a five-star review or rating wherever you listen to podcasts. Now back to the show. That's really good advice. It's a little while since I've been looking for a job myself, but I do obviously come across job ads and and see them advertised online. And I just think it's just such a joke that there's so many that advertise that there's no clear indication of what the salary is. And that's going to be one of the key things that people want to know about when they're applying. You know, is this is this a good fit for me or not? And a lot of it is based on how much money they need to pay the bills. So yeah, I think don't be afraid to put a, a salary band on there and actually be a bit clearer about it, definitely. I, I've got a couple of theories why people don't do it. It's because um, it's usually known that men will negotiate their salaries, whereas women, they they don't. They normally accept, and I really hope that to see a change in that one. So normally, if they're like two, three architects, they might have different salaries. So basically, the practice is already messed up in my eyes, where you should just give everyone the same salary. Normally, sometimes you see like, yeah, um, salary is uh, upon negotiation. Like, that's not great. That already shows me that everyone will be paid differently. So maybe that is something, especially if you're small practices or you're just starting out, don't get into that habit. Be clear on salaries. And I tell you one thing, it will make your life so much easier once you grow as well. And it will be, it's just, it's just all about transparency. And I think people really appreciate that these days. Absolutely. Another thing I was just wondering, actually, is that, in terms of the content, we've we've talked about a lot of the content that we should we should include and the things that they need to know. I was just wondering actually about if there's any things that maybe is that we shouldn't put on there. And I was just thinking about sometimes, you know, when you see these these job ads that have like this, you mentioned earlier in the conversation about this, like they're looking for a unicorn because there's like so many yeah. different requirements on there. Mm. You know, does it get to a point where maybe our expectations of employees is a bit too high as employers in terms of the mandatory list of things that we expect them to be able to do and the qualifications or software skills. Can it kind of get a bit much on some of those job ads that you've seen before? Yeah, 100%. I think there's a rule of thumb um, in terms of responsibilities and requirements. Always use bullet points because people just want to skim through it just to see, like, am I actually qualified for the position? And never use more than seven bullet points on each because if not, it gets too daunting. It won't help you at all. Like the, it will just be so daunting that that people think, oh, I don't have this, I don't have that. I will not get the job anyway, so I won't apply. And I think as a practice owner, you really have to think about like, okay, what do we actually need and what can we teach them? So don't just expect just because someone left that they would have to do the exact same job. You know, they've probably done a lot, you know, so don't expect that you can just fill the same shoes again. You really have to kind of look back and just think, okay, this is what we need. And then, but you have to be really open-minded and just help people, like train them up as well. Like they're so talented, you know, people are there to learn 
And I think sometimes people are just a bit like, you know, very narrow minded and say, okay, we need at least 10 years experience. Eight years is not enough. We need exactly this. And I was like, oh my God. It's like, why are you doing this to yourself? Like, I I bet you don't get the right um, sort of applications whatsoever because it's just so daunting and people will not apply for it. Yeah, a lot of the ads can be quite prescriptive, can't they, with the huge list of uh, job requirements. Uh, I suppose maybe in my mind the exception to the rule would be perhaps if it was like a really short-term contract where you literally just need somebody that does have this requisite number of skills for a particular project that they're coming on board for, where as a practice you're not going to you're not going to have the time then to invest in training them. Whereas if it's any longer term role or if it's a permanent position, then it absolutely makes sense to just, you know, keep an open mind to that list and try and rein yourself in a little bit (laughs) with those job requirements and to to support them and train them and help um, mold them into that role once, you know, once they get started. Um, Okay. If so, if someone's going to write a job ad, they're going to write the job ad, but they've never written a job ad before. Do you have a structure that you'd recommend that they use? Yeah. So um, normally, like first line should be the name of your praxis, what's the job title, and then where's the location? Because again, job title and location are super important. And just one thing to keep in mind, just never make up any job titles, please. I think within architecture, it's quite clear you're either a senior architect, you're a project architect, you're a technologist. So don't be clever. <laughs> Pick up any <laughs> any names, please. And and then just normally what I like to see is just a little bit about the company, just what you guys are working on. And then just about the position, so about the role. So just tell the candidate, like, you will be working on this. Like, you'll be doing this. Like, um, we're working using Revit, for example would you'll be going on site visits and everything and then just like a drop down and not a drop down but basically just bullet points of like what the requirements are so do you need to be ARB registered do you need to have three years post qualification do you need to have graphic skills should you have any healthcare like previous healthcare experience or not and just keep that down to like a minimum maybe just seven obviously UK building regulations that's always a really popular one and then just all about salary and benefits, please. So do not skip that part. And then the, just the last bit, just how to apply. If you're interested in this position, um, please submit your CV and your sample portfolio, like ideally like under 10 megabytes to this and this um, email address. And that's pretty much it, to be honest. I always say keep it like under between like 300 and 600 words. Don't make it too long. And But don't make it too short. I've seen some really short ones where I think that, look more like a tweet you know where I'm just like can we get some more information please like I don't even know what I'm applying to and um yeah so that's literally it so it's not it's not difficult just be really clear just tell the candidate what they can expect and if they're interested they will go on your website and look at your the project you're working on but you have to sell it to them you have to make it sound like this is really exciting and you should join us and not basically the competitor so you need to kind of check out what others are doing as well, I think. Just keep an edge. That's brilliant. <laughs> and that's that structure that you've you've shared with us, that just makes it really super simple and uh, that's something simple and actionable that people can do. So that's absolutely fantastic. Thanks for sharing that. What are some things that practice owners might forget or not pay attention to? I think they underestimate the effort goes into applying for a job these days. So if you are asking for cover letter as well as a CV and a portfolio and something else, then that's a lot of effort. And most people, especially the passive job seekers who are not actively looking and just looking for the right opportunity, they will probably not go for it, you know, because you're making it so difficult and so time consuming. So just keep in mind that it's pretty much a full-time job to look for a job these days. You know, there's so many different um, job boards and um, you've got different channels where you might um, ask them to apply through as well. Just keep in mind, don't don't just ask for everything. So if you don't, if you know you don't read a cover letter, don't ask them to send a cover letter, please. Because people actually really dislike writing cover letters. <laughs> 
And I bet that most people don't read it anyway. And I would also say, um, don't ask people for their salary expectations. I think that's a really unfair question because what they're on right now doesn't mean like this should be like the base level of what you can offer them. Same time, the job they're doing, free, well, the job you're offering might be completely different. So it might be more responsibilities. So I think asking that question is quite, is unfair. And let's say what would happen if I'd say, oh, I, I want 45K, you know, like what if they already say, oh, that's too high. We're not going to interview her. So I think you just, it's just a recipe for disaster. Instead, tell the candidates what the salary range is and then they can check, is this worth it? Am I'm already on that salary? You know, and then you're not wasting your time and not the candidate's time. That is what I would suggest. That's brilliant. Thanks, Arlene. Just to kind of sum things up, I guess, we've, we've rattled through quite a lot of information there for people, so I'm, I'm sure it's going to be really helpful. But what would be the, the main thing that you'd like everyone to take away from this conversation? I think what i like them to take away from it is job adverts do work. You just have to spend a little bit of time. Even if the first one does not work, look at it again and just try it again. You know, just don't be... It's like a negative experience, right? But just get over that fact. And you could also ask your your teams, like, okay, I've written a job advert. Would you apply to that? Or is this like not what we are? Like, or have I missed anything? Or do you think I could do we could change anything? And just be a bit more open minded. And and don't forget, the better you get at it, like it, I appreciate it's not something you do every single day. Like most people don't, right? But um, really, just invest the time. And don't rush it and just invest writing a good job on that because it will work. I tell you that word. As long as you've got all the details we've talked about, about the salary, about the benefits, and and you're just nice and transparent, I'm sure it will work. So, um, yeah, don't give up, please. <laughs> Great advice. Um, <laughs> Was there anything was there anything else that you wanted to add that we we haven't covered in the conversation? Probably we've covered so much and I hope that people are um not like oh this was a lot but yeah please don't look for unicorns and give people a chance as well because people are more than happy to learn and you should just invest into the staff into your staff as well and yeah that is pretty much what I would say um to to that one really. I totally agree. So now it's time for me to ask my regular question that I like to ask all of the guests on the show. So I, I love to travel and discover new places. So could you tell me one of your favorite places and what you love about it? So I love mountains and uh, my partner and I, we when we go skiing, we're in the French Alps and there's this one particular spot. It's like to the left, it's the Mont Blanc and then to the right, it's just and it's like just the French Alps and it's just my happy place. It's so quiet uh, and it's just absolutely stunning. So um, I think that is my absolute favorite place, to be honest, because it's just so, um, I think it's just so unique, to be honest, to have that sort of just the views onto the Mont Blanc and the French Alps. I can't really complain about that. <laughs> you know, I, it's somewhere I've always wanted to go. I've um, I've not. Yeah, I've not been to the French Alps before. I've been to a f well a few other kind of mountainous areas in in Europe. I've been to the the Julian Alps in Slovenia, and I've been to briefly to Austria to a couple of uh, areas there. Um, but yeah, I I do love the mountains, and uh, I'm actually going to be heading off to Wales uh, in a few weeks to do some mountain walking. So. Uh, well, fingers crossed we get some decent weather for it. British weather, it's un unpredictable as ever. Eileen, thanks you so much for coming on the show today and sharing your expertise with everybody. I've really enjoyed chatting with you. Could you remind everyone the best place to connect with you online? Yeah, so I'm quite active on LinkedIn and it's actually just Eileen Round. And I actually think I'm the only one with that name on LinkedIn. So I'm sure you'll find okay. me Okay, and could you could you spell your first name for the listeners as well, please? Yeah, of course. So it's A Y L I N. And um, I'll make sure that we put that in the show notes. And do you want to remind everybody about your website address as well? Yeah, so that is arcjobs.co.uk, and there you'll find 
quite a lot of um, different articles as well. So if you need any more help in terms of the um, writing a job advert, I've actually got everything there for you to look at as well. Oh, that's awesome. Thanks so much. Thank you so much for having me, John. Next time, I'll be discussing the benefits of mentoring with architect Chris Simmons. Thanks so much for listening to this episode of Architecture Business Club. If you liked this episode, think other people might enjoy it, or just want to show your support for the show, then please leave a glowing five-star review or rating wherever you listen to podcasts. It would mean so much to me and makes it easier for new listeners to discover the show. And if you haven't already done so, don't forget to hit the subscribe button so you never miss another episode. If you want to connect with me, you can do that on most social media platforms. Just search for at Mr. John Clayton. The best place to connect with me online, though, is on LinkedIn. You can find a link to my profile in the show notes. Remember, running your architecture business doesn't have to be hard, and you don't need to do it alone. This is Architecture Business Club. 